Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another video I'm doing of uh, ranking a band's studio albums from, in my opinion, uh, worst to best. Again, this is my, just my opinion. You can agree with me, you can disagree with me. Doesn't matter. Um, you could leave, you know, I would like to see your list. What do you think is number one? How do you rank them? Put it in the comments. Um, uh, this video, we're going to do Pearl Jam. Uh, one of, if not my all-time favorite bands, as you can see. I've got the Pearl Jam right behind me on the couch. Um, first off, I'm going to rank... Uh, they have 11 studio albums. Yeah, 11. Uh, right now, I'm going to go for their latest release. Um, we're definitely going to rank it the worst. Uh, which is Giga, Gigaton, I believe it's called. Uh, it was released a few weeks ago. I listened to it, and I think it was just just terrible. Again, uh, this is one of my, if not my all-time favorite band. And um, once this track, uh, I believe it's called Nancy Clairvoyance, came out, it kind of sounded like Pearl Jam doing a track for a Talking Heads tribute album. Which, don't get me wrong, I like Talking Heads, but I like the Talking Heads doing Talking Heads. I like Pearl Jam doing Talking Heads. So, I was kind of like, well, just one track, let's see what happens with the rest of the album. And uh, it's been, I believe, seven years, I think, since Pearl Jam has released its last studio album. So I said, well, let's see when the album comes out. Let's see. And, no. Nah. I listened and there just wasn't anything that stood out to me. There wasn't a single song on there that I felt I could listen to again. And I don't know, maybe sometime down the road I'll re-listen to it, but I I doubt it. I was very uh, unimpressed with Gigaton. And I mean, uh, I know people are like, oh, well, bands change. Uh, other guys are getting older. That's fine. You, you can do that, but no reason for you to suck. And I feel like that album sucks. Sorry. That's number 11 in my worst. Uh, next up is number 10 is Lightning Bolt. Uh, the last album Pearl Jam put out before Gigaton. Uh, again, some great, strange, some, uh, great songs on here. Uh, Get Away, the opener is great. Mind Your Manners, Sirens was a hit song off here. Lightning Bolt, Infallible, maybe my favorite song off of this. Um, Let the Records Play is great. The Sleeping by Myself is good, but I actually preferred the uh, solo version Eddie did for ukulele songs. But the last two tracks, Yellow Moon and Future Days, kind of like, eh, kind of kind of got a little boring for me. Uh, Future Days, to me, kind of sound like a wedding song. Um, it, it may have been, it may have been Eddie's song to his wife. Um, this is coming from the same guy who wrote five years earlier, uh, On Bended Knee is No Way to Be Free, so... Yeah, coming in at uh, number 10, Lightning Bolt. Uh, just because I, I'm ranking these albums don't mean I, I hate them or anything like that. Um, these next two are tough. I actually just switched them right now. Coming in at number 9 is Backspacer. Um, a very, very great album. Very strong album. Uh, the song got some. I love when it picks up in that. It's such a great song. Uh, the Fixer was the hit from this, but Just Breathe was the huge song from this. <laughs> gotta put Pearl Jam back on the map again, if you kind of want to say that. Uh, I know Eddie performed it solo. Uh, I believe they did it at the Grammys. I don't know if it was Eddie solo or Pearl Jam together. Amongst the Waves is a great song. Force of Nature may be my favorite track from this. Uh, but yeah, Pearl Jam Backspacer, very strong album. Uh, pretty great album. I know a lot of people love this album. They put it top of their list. Coming at number nine, which is, uh, it was originally a 10, but I decided to switch with Backspacer. It's Riot Act. Uh, Pearl Jam embarked on a huge world tour at the Riot Act. And it was kind of like, I feel like the twilight of their career. They released a lot of live albums from this. They did a lot of acoustic shows. They released a live DVD, which was uh, Live at the Garden, Madison Square Garden. And uh, after this, they, they released uh, Lost Dogs, which was uh, Rarities and B-Sides, which I actually absolutely love. But I didn't include it in this list because it's so many studio albums. 
And, uh, yeah, uh, Pearl Jam also released the greatest hits called Rear View Mirror at this album is released. But there's just so many songs on here that I'm so familiar with because I've listened to all those live albums, Listen, which Pearl Jam Live is just amazing. One of the best bands you could ever see live, and their live albums are just incendiary. Uh, some of my favorite songs off here, Love Boat Captain, uh, Save You is definitely a um, fist or cool song. I Am Mine is the hit. Thumbing My Way is a hint at Eddie doing the ukulele solo stuff. Uh, Green Disease is a great song. You Are, I've always loved off of this. Bush Leaguers are Stab at George Bush. And it ends with All or None, which is a great album closer. Uh, next up is an album I got for my birthday. I believe I got it the day it came out, actually. And, um... I feel like it's Pearl Jam progressing into the next millennium. Growing up from, you know, children to, you know, adults now. Or not children, but young adults to actually family men with kids. And this has been binaural. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. This was another album that Pearl Jam released a shitload of live stuff from. They uh, called it the Bootleg Series. They actually released a live bootleg CD, you know, official bootleg CD from every single show they did on this tour. I actually still own the t-shirt from this tour by, by Narl. Um, Breaker Falls, not a strong opener, but uh, a couple a couple hit songs off here. Nothing as it seems was the biggest, but also Light Years and Thin Air got some radio play. Uh, my favorite tracks off here would definitely be uh, Of The Girl and Sleight of Hands. Uh, Soon Forget is actually the very first, I believe, Eddie ukulele song but this this album gets a lot of like shit for some reason and it also introduced me to the hubble telescope and um yeah girl jam released like i think like three albums straight with a little booklet like this that went inside the uh slipcase but yeah by now gets a bad rap but i it's a great album for me um i feel like it definitely showcases pearl jam from uh their early grunge god roots to uh, progressing and kind of uh, growing up, maturing mentally. Uh, next up is Pearl Jam's self-titled debut, debut or the Avocado album. This was the follow-up, came out three years after Riot Act. And for me, it felt like it took forever to come out. Uh, a lot longer than three years, but looking back, I was like, ah, it's only three years. Definitely a lot of stronger tracks on here. Uh, heavier than Binaural and Ride Act. Uh, Life Wasted, Life Wasted, The Reprise. Uh, the title track off of here was uh, Worldwide Suicide. And um, I think I saw them twice on this tour. Maybe three times when they toured this album. Uh, amazing. Severed Hand, Marker in the Sand are two of my favorite songs. Unemployable, Gone. Gone is amazing. And of course, Inside Job. The track written by Mike McCready uh, still holds up and such a great song to close the album. All right, the uh, next five. Uh, it's very hard to pick and order them because I love all these albums uh, almost equally. It's kind of like saying, which one of your five kids do you love the most? Uh, so coming to number five is 1996's No Code. This was uh, not really commercial success for Pearl Jam, who was huge at the time. Uh, it does feature the uh, minor hit, How How, uh, but there's also some tracks in there that, you know, us Pearl Jam Faithful Love, which is uh, Sometimes, uh, and Off He Goes, uh, Red Mosquito, Lucan, Present Tense, uh, In My Tree and Smile are definitely my favorite tracks off of this. And I kind of like the, the uh, booklet or CD case they, they made here. Pretty cool. I'll try to open it. But this was Pearl Jam at like they were about to break up. They kind of had it. Uh, they were fighting with Ticketmaster. Uh, Eddie kind of took control of the band. There was a lot of in band fighting between the other guys. So, uh... <coughs> excuse me. Not a huge success successful album um, sales wise, but. Um, this album is greater than some band's entire catalog. Great album. 
Uh, next up is one of my favorite Pearl Jam albums, Yield, uh, released in 1998, uh, the beginning of 1998. And if you haven't seen it, watch the video, Single Video Theory, which is a, you know, VHS slash DVD of the making of Yield. And this is Pearl Jam coming back together as a family and being the Pearl Jam that we know today. The, the grunge was kind of gone. The uh, young round of Masti was gone. The guys are trying to, you know, grow up on this. Uh, Binaura was a follow-up to this. And um, some really strong tracks on here. It's one of those albums you just listen to from start to finish. Uh, Brain, of J Brain of J, Faithful, No Way. Of course, the hits, Given the Fly, and Wishlist. Um, MFC, which is great. Um, I know live they do an untitled track before MFC, and I kind of wish they recorded it before MFC on this track. And my favorite, one of my all-time favorite Pearl Jam songs, and a minor hit off of this, In Hiding. And then it ends with All Those Yesterdays, which is just amazing. And a uh, fun fact, this Pearl Jam album, along with No Code featured drummer Jack Irons, which was actually the original drummer of Red Hot Chili Peppers, but he left the Chili Peppers before they released their first two albums because he went with another band, which I can't remember the name of, who uh, thought they were going to be bigger than Chili Peppers, but it didn't happen. But then again, this was Chili Peppers in 83, 84. He's, you know, 85, that are. And Jack Irons came back for the Uplift MoFo Party Plan in 1987. And unfortunately, that was the same album that Hillel Slovak was featured on his last album, and he passed away due to a heroin overdose. And Jack Irons just kind of uh, retired at a young age, didn't want to play drums anymore. Um, but Jack Irons was the guy who turned Stone Goster and Jeff Ament onto Eddie Vedder because they were friends. So if it wasn't for Jack Irons, we wouldn't have Eddie Vedder in the band Pearl Jam. And uh, Pearl Jam kind of uh, wanted him back as a drummer, and Jack agreed to come back in the mid to late 90s with no code, and he did Yield. And uh, I forget offhand of why he, he left the band. I, th I think he just I think he just didn't want to do it anymore. And then uh, they got Matt Cameron, who was fresh on a breakup from Soundgarden uh, after Soundgarden broke up with Down on the Upside. All right, coming at number three is Vitology. Um, one of Pearl Jam's probably most commercially successful albums. Features one of their biggest hits of all time, Better Man. Also features the radio hits Corduroy, um, Nothing Man, Spin a Back for Circle, Not For You. Don't really get as much radio play anymore, but uh, Corduroy and Better Man obviously do. So this was actually taken as a, it's kind of like a, Medical booklet there. Figure from a medical journal that Eddie Vedder had. That's where they got the artwork from. But yeah, Pearl Jam didn't really, really... Um, this came out at the end of 94. And it was actually only released on vinyl at very, the very first. And then re-released on CD. So, after Pearl Jam released this, that's when the whole Ticketmaster thing blew up. This was released in late 94. And the Ticketmaster thing happened in 95 where Pearl Jam didn't really tour much behind this because they were fighting Ticketmaster over ticket prices. Uh, they want their fans, you know, to see them for a good price and not have to pay Ticketmaster early surcharges. Well, yeah, Vitology is just a, a very strong album. There's some uh, tracks on there that I want to consider like fully songs, like Bugs, uh, Pride 2, which I kind of like, uh, P-R-I-V-A-C-Y means nothing to me. It's kind of a Eddie going against, you know, the mainstream where... Uh, Kurt had already died before this album came out, so Eddie was, you know, kind of up there in the mainstream as this new rock god, this new grunge god, along with Chris Cornell, uh, Lane Staley, and also, uh, Hi Davanita, I don't know how to say that, and the ending, uh, Hey Foxy, Ma Pino Mama, that's me. Alright, now these last two, um, they could switch at any time, but as for right now, I'm going with, you know, my favorites. And again, this whole list is my opinions. Doesn't mean, uh, it's nothing's official right now. But coming at number two is Pearl Jam's debut with 10. Um, amazing album. You can turn the radio on any time and you can hear any of the tracks off of here, like Black, Alive, Even Flow, Jeremy. 
Um, Pearl Jam released a video for Even Flow and Alive. They were kind of like live videos. Uh, well, you know, video footage was live, but the audio was studio versions. And they released a video for Black. They did release a music video for Jeremy, which won all kinds of awards at you know MTV Music Awards and things like that. But when I first heard this album, I heard this at wrestling practice. Of course, I knew Even Flow, Jeremy, and Alive. But when it started with Once, it just like put the adrenaline in my blood. Such an amazing and you know intro to an album, and the ending release still remains one of Pearl Jam's best songs. And uh, this may be studio. You know, produced this may be Pearl Jam's best studio produced album. Yeah, Pearl Jam 10 coming at number two, and like I said, that may that may be number one depending on the day. Uh, but overall, the biggest Pearl Jam album that had the biggest impact on me and it gets me pumped up and always in the mood to whatever is uh, versus and I'm putting that at number one. Um, so many tracks on here were also featured on the radio. Great, such a great follow up to 10. Uh, when you release such an epic debut album like that, it's kind of hard to follow it up, and these guys did it. Um, Go, Animal Daughter, Glorify G, Dissident. They're the five songs that open this album, and you can, like I said, you can turn on any rock radio and you'll hear those five songs throughout the day. Uh, WMA, one of my favorite songs. It's such like it. It's such, it's so different. There's nothing like WMA. It's just um, that it goes right in the blood, which is so f freaking heavy and fast and just epic. And Eddie just screams as long as I love it. Then it goes in the rear view mirror, which is a very minor hit. But obviously a fan favorite and just an amazing, amazing song. That intro is so simple, but so easy. And just great. I love it. Uh, it goes in the rats, which that chorus is so, you know... They don't scare you when somebody else. It's so fucking great. I love it. Uh, and it goes to another like huge hit for Pearl Jam, which a lot of people don't actually know. The, probably don't know the name of the song. Elderly woman behind the counter in a small town. Everyone may know the song, but I don't know if they'll know the name. And then uh, one of my all-time favorite Pearl Jam songs, Leash. It's impossible to sit still and listen to a leash. You just want to smash something, just get up, and dance, or whatever. And it ends with um, one of the greatest Pearl Jam songs of all time, Indifference. If you thought release was great to end an album, listen to Indifference. And in my opinion, it may be the best Pearl Jam song. It's up there with Black for me. Indifference, just an amazing album. So yeah, number one for me is definitely Versus. And uh, I'm going to go back. Number one, Versus. Number two, Pearl Jam 10. Number three, Vitology. Four, Yield. Five, No Code. Six, Self-Titled Avocado Album. Seven is Binaural. Eight, Riot Act. Nine, Backspacer. Ten, Lightning Bolt. And the eleventh album, which I don't own because I don't want to waste my money on it, is Gigaton. And again, besides Gigaton, these 10 albums, you can go out there and buy any one of them and you'll be blown away. I love all these albums. Uh, they're all amazing to me. Like I said, there's like two songs at the end of uh, Lightning Bolt that I'm truly not in love with, but the rest of the album is amazing. So yeah, that is um, my ranking on Pearl Jam Studio albums. And um, I did a Metallica video earlier, so that's why I'm wearing the same shirt. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Uh, there'll be more videos coming soon. And uh, please head over to the ElysiumsRock.com. That is my band, the Elysiums. Uh, kind of a grunge metal band. Check us out. And um, you can subscribe on our YouTube channel, the Elysiums. Instagram, Facebook, we're all there. I already subscribed there. They're my channel. <laughs> but anyway, guys, stay healthy. Thanks for watching. Good night.